Shoppers and retailers embraced to buy single-use bag charge move to introduce 25 fill charge as part of wider plan to support the environment reusable bags on display at Spinney's Motor City, Dubai. All photos, Kushnam Bandari, The National. Reusable bags on display at Spinney's Motor City, Dubai. All photos, Kushnam Bandari, The National. Patrick Ryan July 2, 2022. Listen in English. Listen in Arabic. Beta V.1.0, powered by automated translation. Dubai shoppers and retailers have embraced a new green tariff on single-use bags aimed at cutting back on waste and protecting the environment. A mandatory charge of 25 fees, 7 cents, on the purchase of each bag was introduced on Friday. Bags were previously handed out free of charge to customers in stores. The fee applies to all bags made of plastic, paper, biodegradable plastic and plant-based biodegradable materials that are less than 57 micrometers thick. A micrometer is one thousandth of a millimeter. This is the first step in a plan to ban such bags in the Emirate in the next two years. Shoppers Back Plan Norbert Sama, from Ghana buys a paper bag for his groceries at Spinney's Motor City, Dubai. Kushnan Bandari, The National Norbert Sama from Ghana buys a paper bag for his groceries at Spinney's Motor City, Dubai. Kushnan Bandari, The National. The less plastic the better. It's good news because we have to take action to reduce the amount of plastic waste we are producing, said South African Eric Smith, who was doing his morning shopping in the Gion hypermarket in Dubai Hills Mall on Friday. I'm often guilty of forgetting to bring bags from home with me to do my shopping, like a lot of people and I just end up accepting the free plastic bag they are offering. Having to pay for the bags now will be a big incentive to bring our own reusable ones from home. Similar tariffs on single-use bags are in place in more than 30 nations around the world, with total or partial bans in more than 90 countries. On June 1, Abu Dhabi became the first place in the Middle East to ban single-use plastic bags. Almost 300 million tons of plastic pollution is created each year worldwide according to the UN Environment Programme. Less than 9% of that ever ends up being recycled. The rest usually finds its way to dumps, landfills and natural environments. The UN also estimated oceans would contain more plastic than fish by the year 2050, unless current trends are reversed. Also welcoming the new charge was Indian shopper Hunaid Memon. It's a good move because it will encourage people to reduce the amount of plastic bags they use, said Mr. Memon who works in the financial sector. But we shouldn't stop there and just replace it with paper alternatives, as they cause a lot of harm to our environment too. Alternatives on offer reusable bags on display at Spinney's in Motor City, Dubai. Kushnan Bandari, the national reusable bags on display at Spinney's in Motor City, Dubai. Kushnan Bandari, the national supermarkets are offering a raft of alternatives to single-use plastic bags, from recycled options to standard paper bags. Gian is giving a portion of the proceeds from the plastic bag charge to Emirates Nature WWF. From offering paper bags to reusable containers in our grab-and-go section, we are committed to make a positive social, environmental, and economic impact on the future of the food retail industry, said Marc Laurent, retail president of Gian's parent group GMG Consumer. The yellow plastic bags from Spinney's have been a common sight across the UAE over the years, however they were nowhere to be seen on Friday morning. The supermarket chain has scrapped the single-use plastic bags, offering shoppers a paper alternative instead at the checkout. I brought my own bags with me today, like I always do, said Swedish homemaker May Sareg, who was shopping with her family at Spinney's in Motor City. It's something I am used to, because it's common in my home country. I always keep a reusable bag in the car as well, for convenience. One shopper welcomed the plastic bag charge and said she now would be making sure to bring her own bags to reuse. Nardo CI pays 75 fees for a paper bag at Spinney's Motor City, Dubai. Kushnan Bandari, The National. Nardo CI pays 75 fees for a paper bag at Spinney's Motor City, Dubai. Kushnan Bandari, The National. There's no question we need to reduce the amount of plastic bags in circulation, said Nardo CI, a teacher from Ethiopia. The more plastic we use the more damage we do to the planet around us. However, I just paid 75 fees for a paper bag, which is a bit expensive. It'll encourage people to bring their own though. A senior figure from Spinney said the paper bags, 
costing 75 fees each, were a temporary measure that would eventually be done away with. Travel for 4th of July weekend skyrockets as travelers hit the road crowds pass through Salt Lake City International Airport in Salt Lake City, Utah. AP crowds pass through Salt Lake City International Airport in Salt Lake City, Utah. AP Associated Press July 1, 2022. Listen in English. Listen in Arabic Beta V.1.0, powered by automated translation The 4th of July holiday weekend is off to a booming start, with airport crowds crushing pre-pandemic numbers. Travelers seem to be experiencing fewer delays and canceled flights early on Friday than earlier this week. The Transportation Security Administration screened more than 2.4 million travelers at airport checkpoints on Thursday, 17% more than on Friday before the 4th of July in 2019. Top Destinations for Summer Travel from the UAE, in Pictures 1. The Philippines is the top choice for UAE travelers this summer, with more Skyscanner flight bookings to Manila than any other destination. Photo, Chris Dagupa, Unsplash 1. The Philippines is the top choice for UAE travelers this summer, with more Skyscanner flight bookings to Manila than any other destination. Photo, Chris Dagupa, Unsplash. We expect that, Friday, is going to be busy, of course, and then Sunday will be very busy, TSA Administrator David Pekusk said on NBC's Today Show. The American Automobile Association, AAA, predicted that about 48 million people will travel at least 80 kilometers or more from home at the weekend, slightly fewer than in 2019. The organization said car travel would set a record, even with the national average price for gasoline hovering near $5. Read more. Weekend of travel chaos begins as Ryanair and EasyJet strikes cause mass cancellations. Leisure travel has bounced back this year, offsetting weakness in business travel and international flying. Still. The total number of people flying has not recovered to pre-pandemic levels. TSA screened 11% fewer people in June than it did in the same month of 2019. Thursday marked the 11th time since the pandemic started that the TSA had checked more people than it did on the same day in 2019 and only the second time since February. Airlines could almost indeed be carrying more passengers if they had enough staffing. Many U.S. airlines have trimmed their summer schedules after bad weather, Air traffic delays and a lack of employees caused widespread cancellations during the Memorial Day weekend. Independence Day in the U.S., in pictures. Fireworks on the boardwalk at New York's historic Coney Island. Photo, Bob Yagendorf. Fireworks on the boardwalk at New York's historic Coney Island. Photo, Bob Yagendorf. Airline executives blame their flight problems on the Federal Aviation Administration, which runs the nation's air traffic control system but Transport Secretary Pete Buttigieg disputes that claim. By late morning on Friday on the East Coast, airlines had canceled about 200 U.S. flights and another 1,400 were delayed. From June 22 through Wednesday at least 600 flights were canceled, and between 4,000 and 7,000 were delayed per day, tracking service FlightAware reported. Updated, July 1, 2022, 11.03 p.m. Travel Holidays U.S. Air Travel Weekend Edition Hanafas empowers Egypt's at-risk youth to reach for the sky through football. Hanafas empowers Egypt's at-risk youth to reach for the sky through football. Giorgio Armani, How I Fell in Love with the Middle East Giorgio Armani, How I Fell in Love with the Middle East Sharks are heroes in battle to save the oceans. Sharks are heroes in battle to save the oceans. Farnborough Air Show's post-COVID comeback marks a huge moment for the industry. Farnborough Air Show's post-COVID comeback marks a huge moment for the industry. Meet the Indian family keeping the dying art of Rogan painting alive. Meet the Indian family keeping the dying art of Rogan painting alive. Newsletters. New, checking in, Thursday's email address. More from the National. In an image that illustrates this article Biden predicts states will try to arrest women who travel for abortions. Biden predicts states will try to arrest women who travel for abortions. U.S. An image that illustrates this article Biden to honor Kizer Khan, who lashed out at Trump's Muslim Ben Story gallery icon. Biden to honor Kizer Khan, who lashed out at Trump's Muslim. U.S. An image that illustrates this article as TikTok seeks to reassure U.S. Congress on data security. TikTok seeks to reassure U.S. Congress on data security.
An image that illustrates this article is Apple CarPlay to make it easier to buy fuel with iOS 16. Apple CarPlay to make it easier to buy fuel with iOS 16. A thin thread of paint hangs from a needle as it is slowly guided with deft turns of the hand into a pattern on a piece of cloth. The process is repeated a few more times until a floral design is ready within minutes. Sumer Khatri shows off the beautiful pattern while explaining the intricacies of Rogan's painting and the struggles his family faced to keep the art alive. Rogan painting is a traditional art of cloth painting practiced only in the Kutch district of Gujarat, India. The art, which originated in Iran, is believed to be more than 400 years old and gets its name from the Persian word for oil, from the main ingredient of castor oil in the paint. The art of Rogan painting is believed to be more than 400 years old. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. The art of Rogan painting is believed to be more than 400 years old. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. After India's independence in 1947, only four families in three villages of Gujarat practiced this art. By 1975, the three other families had given it up, as they hardly made a decent living, and took to other means of livelihood. Since then, the Khatri family in Nayarna village is the only family who has kept it alive, in spite of the difficulties. Sumer Khatri's father, Abdul Ghaffur, fondly referred to as Ghaffur Bai, the head of the Khatri family, is credited with having revived the art for which he was awarded Padma Shri, India's fourth highest civilian award, in November 2021. Rogan art is a very difficult and time-consuming form of artwork with low returns, he tells the National. Earlier, the practice was used as barter. For marriages, Mr. Khatri's family would make ceremonial dresses, bed covers, table covers and more using Rogan art. Weddings and festivities were their main source of income. Initially, Rogan painting was only taught to boys because women were not able to practice the intricate art after they were married. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. Initially, Rogan painting was only taught to boys because women were not able to practice the intricate art after they were married. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. Even when the whole family was involved in producing the art, it still did not fetch enough to feed all. I left school after fourth grade and focused on the art to earn more money. So did my siblings, says Ghaffur Bai. Women had to do daily chores and contribute to the family budget, so they were encouraged to do simpler artwork such as bandani tie and dye, which would fetch about two rupees, which was quite a deal in those days for the time spent. Over the years, the practice became so rigid that women would naturally devote their time to other art forms. Two of his Mr. Khatri's nieces also learned this art but were unable to pursue their passion after they were married. This discouraged the Khatri family from teaching the art form to other female members. But word soon got around that the family taught the art to only male members of the family. Many families gave up the art because it was too labor-intensive with small returns. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. Many families gave up the art because it was too labor-intensive with small returns. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. Often we would hear of this allegation that our family was secretive and we don't show or teach the art process, Sumer Khatri says. Things got to such a state that in 2010 an international NGO from Paris, composed of four officials, landed at our home. They asked us the reason for the secretiveness and discrimination in teaching Rogan painting. Gafforbi took this as an opportunity to refute all of the claims. As he demonstrated and explained the intricacies of the art to the team, the officials realized there had been some miscommunication, or a deliberate attempt to bring the family into disrepute. After the NGO visit, Gafforbi decided he would provide Rogan art classes for women only. We've taken girls to coach them on this art from all communities, he says. Abdul Ghaffur Khatri with his pupils. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. Abdul Ghaffur Khatri with his pupils. Photo, Abdul Ghaffur Khatri. Rogan art does not use previously drawn outlines. It is purely from imagination. Hours of dedication and patience are required to produce just one A4 sized fabric. In the classes, an artist from the Khatri family teaches girls how to dab the needle into the ink, which is a kind of semi fluid paste rolling it and dragging the fine thread of ink to make geometric or floral patterns. Just this basic initiation into the art takes two to three hours. Since the classes opened in 2010, more than 400 girls have been trained by the Khatri family. The first batch had only 15 girls. Read more. History of Indian Art, Open Source Encyclopedia Traces 10,000.